got another video for the A-level chemistry multiple choice practice. So this is the third one for inorganic and physical. There's a separate playlist for organic if you wanted to check those out. Hope you like the video and if you haven't already subscribed, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel? As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay, so make a start. So all four of the um, diagrams have got the right number of electrons in, six electrons, but two of them we can rule out straight away, and that's A and B because of the 2S1 configuration. So that's completely wrong. So it's down to C and D, and D is the right answer because we've got Hund's rule at play there. So in something like a 2P subshell, you have to singly occupy the orbitals before you start pairing up. So D was the answer. Number two, so before I go into the answer, just a reminder, halogens are oxidizing agents, so they're electron acceptors, and halides are reducing agents, so they're electron donors. So that means straight away we can rule out B and D because chlorine is a halogen, so it's not a reducing agent, and chloride is a halide, it can't oxidize, it's a reducing agent. So thinking about A, iodine can't take electrons from bromide ions, it's lower down in group seven, so it's less reactive effectively. So C was the right answer. Bromide ions can give its electrons to chlorine. So C was right. Number three, so we've got one single molecule of this gas has that mass. So if you remember, a mole of anything is Avogadro's number of particles. So basically, to get the MR, we need to multiply the mass of one molecule by Avogadro's number. So when you do that, you get an answer of 16. So the answer is A, methane. For number four, we need the equation for the reaction between sodium carbonate and HCl. So when you multiply the concentration by the volume of HCl, you get 0.1 moles. So applying the ratio, that means there's 0.05 moles of sodium carbonate needed. Multiply by the MR of sodium carbonate, which is 106, gives 5.3 grams for your answer. So B is the right answer. Number five, so all I'm interested in is the ion, this NO21 minus ion. So how do we know it's one minus? Well, we need two of them to go with the magnesium. And remember, magnesium's two plus. Each of those oxygens will have an oxidation number of minus two. So that's a total of minus four. So to be left with a one minus charge overall, the nitrogen has to be plus three. So B was the answer. Moving on to number six. So redox reaction involves oxidation number increase and oxidation number decrease. Now, you haven't got time to work out all the oxidation numbers of everything in the equations. A quick way to do it is look for atoms that appear in compounds and as the element. And straight away, you can see D has it. So you've got copper in a compound and as an element, nitrogen in a compound as an element. So that is the answer. Moving on to number seven. So the quick way to do this, I think, is to look for any metal that's at the end of a set and straight away you can see in A you've got aluminium third so that must be the answer because all of the other ones third element they're not metals so A must be the answer. Moving on to number eight a little bit tricky this one I think so I've summarized the information as an equation I've got that many grams of M and we've made that many grams of the chloride when it's reacted with excess chlorine so the formula of the chloride is going to be MCl2 because it's a group two chloride. So the first thing we want to do is work out how many grams of chlorine have reacted. So obviously that's just the difference between these two numbers. So that's coming out at 6.247 grams. Next thing we're going to do is work out how many moles that is. So when you divide by the MR of chlorine, 71, you get 0 0.088 moles of chlorine. So the ratio of M to Cl2 is one to one. So that must also be 0 0.088 moles. So now we know that, we can work out its MR, mass over moles, which comes out at 40.1, which makes B the answer, calcium. 
Question nine, so we'll just run through the statements and see which one isn't correct. Magnesium hydroxide can be used to treat indigestion. Yes, it can. Calcium hydroxide is used in agriculture to neutralize alkaline soils. That's the wrong answer because calcium hydroxide is alkaline. So that will be used to neutralize acidic soils. So B was the answer. Moving on to number 10, I think this is another tricky one. So the first thing I wanna do is divide this delta H for this reaction by two, and that's gonna give me the enthalpy change or the energy released per mole of ozone. So obviously that's minus 142 kilojoules per mole. Next thing I need to do is work out how many moles of ozone there are in one cubic meter. So that's where this information comes in. So one divided by 2.5 gives us 0.4 moles. So all I need to do now is multiply 142 by 0.4 and that'll tell us the energy released for one cubic meter, so 0.4 moles. Which comes out at 56.8, so A was the answer. Question 11 is all about the Arrhenius equation. So in the y equals mx plus c form, the straight line equation form, lin of k equals minus a over r multiplied by one over t plus lin a. So this pink highlighted bit is the m part, y equals mx plus c, that's your gradient. So that gradient of minus 4420 equals minus a over r. First thing I'm gonna do is cancel out these minus signs. So to get a year, we multiply the 4420 by R, which is 36747.9, but remember that's in joules per mole. So we need to divide by 1,000, which is going to give us 36.7 kilojoules per mole. So the answer was C. Question 12, just remember, conjugate acid-base pairs have to differ by an H plus ion. So the pair that does that is D. Question 13, so this thing here is going to be octahedral, this complex. So what sort of stereoisomers can you have? You can have a trans form of it, and I've just done a very shorthand way of this um, bidentate ligand, by the way, just for speed. You can have the cis form of it, so that's when these chlorides are 90 degrees apart. I forgot to say before, the, uh, in the trans form they're 180 degrees apart. But the thing to remember is the cis isomer can exhibit optical isomerism. So this is the mirror image of that. It's non-superimposable on the first one. And so the answer was three, so B. Question 14, we'll just run through the three statements to see which ones are correct. Statement one isn't correct because copper is a transition element, but the element has 3D10 configuration which is not partly filled, so one's not right. Statement two is obviously correct. We can have more than one oxidation state in its compounds, as is three, they can form colored ions. So two and three correct, C is the answer. And finally, question 15, you can see I've um, highlighted the word alkaline, so we're only interested in systems with OH- ions in. So I'm ignoring this one and this one. So statement one is wrong because it's got H plus ions in it. Statement two is correct because no matter what the electrolyte is in a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, the overall reaction is the combustion of hydrogen. And statement three is correct because the cell potential, most positive electrode potential minus least, does give plus 1.23 volts. Two and three correct, C is the answer.